Next, we're going to move on to um, looking at um, some useful applications. And I think the first thing that we're going to want to talk about is how to add a user to a project. Because by default, people can't access any projects. When you have a new RedCap account, you will have no projects accessible. If you created one, like this training project, you could then access that. But how do you start a new project? Or how do you, uh, how do you invite a collaborator to a project that you've begun? Or how do you ask a collaborator to add you to a project? That's where we're going to go to next. And we're going to see that in user rights. Okay, so here I got to this user rights menu just on the left hand navigation menu under applications and I went to user rights here. Uh, there's a similar but, but different link called DAGs or data access groups. We're really just going to deal with the user rights now. Okay, so when I click on this, I can see all of the REDCap usernames of um, anyone that can access this project. The only one right now is myself, my own account. And I can also see the, uh, the levels of access and the features um, that are available to, to each user that can access this project. So to invite somebody else now, um, you know, maybe some uh, collaborators to work on this project with me, some members of my team or so on, I would first need their REDCap username. Typically a REDCap username is uh, somebody's first name underscore their last name. And if those people are based at George Washington University or the GW Hospital or MFA, they'll typically have a GWU underscore before that. Um, but really, it's uh, easy to just email the person and say, hey, what's your REDCap username? I want to add you to this project. The next thing you'll do is type in their username here. I'm going to just do a quick example if I type in like John Smith. Um, I don't. I think because there's not actually a John Smith in the system right now, it might not let me move to this menu. Okay, it's not going to let me. Um, so that's one check that you could do. Just to walk through this example, I'm going to put in one of the RedCap training accounts. So uh, that would be like RC user 30, for example. And I'm going to pretend that this is an actual person like Jane Doe or John Smith or whoever that I want to invite to this project. So I would type in their username and then I would say I want to add them with custom rights. And now I can see all of the different uh, user rights that I could give this person. So first I could set an expiration date um, and then I can give them access to certain privileges. The three here are really the most important privileges we could discuss. The first is project design and setup. This is a high level privilege, but it's it's really needed to for anybody that's going to be able to create uh, create or build or modify a project. So if you want them modifying or editing instruments and things like that, they're going to need that ability. This user rights ability is really the most powerful ability you can give someone. So be careful giving people access to this feature because somebody with the ability to modify user rights can also modify their own user rights. So if you gave somebody user rights ab ability but then gave them no access for data export, theoretically they could open up uh, REDCap, go into their user rights and, and modify that. So user rights is really the probably the highest level privilege in here. Um, so be careful about adding people with that. That should be conserved for really a, a relatively few uh, permanent members of your team. Then under data exports, you can give, give no access for data export, export only de-identified fields, um, or the full data set. Uh, there's also an option to remove the fields that you've tagged as identifiers. Um, and then so on. The rest of the, the privileges are relatively self-explanatory here. And generally, the defaults will, will do pretty well. But if you want somebody to you know be able to uh, see the logging trail, you could add that here. Um, if you want them to be able to you know delete or rename records, you might want to uh, add those abilities. And over on the right-hand side here, we can see data rights by instrument. So that's another level of control you can add. Um, you know, if somebody's not going to be involved at all with the physical exam portion, 
you could maybe give them only read only access or no access to that part of the project depending on um, your your how your study team's organized so that's another option um, here okay so if we add that user now all of a sudden that next user appears here under um, user rights and we can see the different features that they have and to edit any of those you could click on them and just say edit user privileges I'll also mention the roles here um, these are sim uh, similar to the same menu we just saw for adding a user but you can give uh, you can create that role and have that as a permanent offering in your project so for instance you could have something like data entry person and you could create that role and you could set those permissions. So maybe this person has um, you know, no access to project design and setup. They can only export um, the de-identified de data set and you know, but we're gonna let them rename records, for instance. And I'm gonna create this role. Now I can more easily add new users, especially if I'm expecting that I'm going to add, you know, five staff members or students to this role that are going to have this, um, these responsibilities in a project. Instead of adding a new user with custom rights every time, I could type in a different person's username. In this case, I'm just going to use another one of the training accounts, RC user 29, and assign them to the role of data entry person. And now, you know, I didn't have to set those rights again every time I want to add somebody to that role I can just select it from the drop down list and you can have multiple roles okay the next thing we're going to want to look at is how to actually view and export the data we've collected in a project so to do that again we're going to go to the left hand menu under applications and we're going to click on data exports reports and stats um, and you can see there's a number of options here. First, let's just say, let's view a report of all the data that we've collected. So similar to what we saw in the record status dashboard, we can see the three different record IDs, but now we also see um, the field labels, the variables, and the answer choices um, that were selected for uh, each of the completed responses or partially uh, each of the started responses. Sometimes this will be quite a lot to take in, especially in a big project that could have hundreds of records and maybe hundreds of fields. So um, we may want to begin by just exporting this report, which we can do by clicking this down arrow. And then you can select some export options. Um, I find that I almost always just want to export the CSV uh, with um, the raw data or uh, perhaps including the labels. And then you have some options here. If you, if you have access to identified information, you can also restrict that in this given export. So I could say remove all tagged identifier fields, hash the record ID field, which will convert the record name into you know, a random string of variables. Um, and you could remove date and time stamped fields as well. So let's just leave those for now though and I'll say export data, I'll get this link. You remember to click here to actually begin the download. And then I can open that on my computer in Excel and um, view that file. Um, I'm not gonna show that right now because uh, I'm, I'm just recording this particular window. Um, okay, so the next thing after doing that export I want to show you is that there's some built-in stats and charts in REDCap that can be pretty helpful. Um, so we'll just select for now the, the pre-screening instrument and you could see that REDCap by uh, default just builds some of these nice little plots for us. Uh, they're not publication ready figures but they could be useful for um, updating uh, at a lab meeting or things like that. So if you wanted to save any of these you can just click this to link to download the image, save it to your computer. Um, and depending on the types of va values you are collecting, the, the graphs that Red Cap will build for you will be a bit different. Um, and you can also choose some options here to view as, you know, for instance, a bar chart or a pie chart. Okay, another thing that's really useful in, the, in this application of data exports, reports, and stats is the ability to make custom reports. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, we 
we can get there by clicking on this create new report tab or by just starting from data exports reports and stats on the left hand menu so by default we have reports for all data or we have um, selected instruments we can also create a custom report and this is really useful for following uh, subsets of your uh, study subjects and doing a variety of things so um, first you can give you know give your report any name um, you know one option of something that can be useful is like new enrollments and you can you know and, and I'll guess I'll give that a date too, like new enrollments April 2020 um, and now you can select what fields you want to be in this report so you can do from like the drop down list um, or first you could quick add and just select all of the different fields you might want all the way up through all fields or maybe you just want some spe specific things like record ID, date of birth, sex, um, break age, and height and weight. And uh, I'll close those. So now those fields have been added to the report. And in this case, I'm saying this is like a new enrollment report, just to give you an example of something you might want to do. And I'm going to create a, a filter here um, by saying I only want people to appear in this report if the, um, you know, they were enrolled in this project after a certain date. So in this case, I didn't record a date in pre-screening or follow-up if I you know, had wanted to actually track those things, I probably should have. Uh, but I do have a PE date here. So um, in this case, I could say, you know, only if the PE date was after um, April 1st, 2020, do I want them to show up in this report. So I created that part report and I'm viewing it now and this is showing, okay, there's been no new responses since that time period. Um, but as soon as new people were added in the month of April, they would show up here. So just to show you that, I'll go to the record status dashboard. I'll take this record ID one and I'll, I'll set the physical exam as if it was today. You know, we'll say this person had everything normal. Mark this form as complete, save and exit. Okay, now we see pre-screening and physical exam was both done for record ID one. Also notice now I have a new report that shows up on the left-hand menu. Now that we have our first custom report, we it shows up here, easy to get to from anywhere. We could click on that and now we see, okay, one record has passed that filter that we set in place for new enrollments in April. Okay, so you could do that to track all sorts of things. You could create a new report to show, um, you know, it, for instance, if you wanted to track people that were pregnant in a separate report or so on. You could add filters in place um, in this step two area, um, or sorry, in this step three area to uh, include a filter for any, any value based on the report. So, you know, if you want to do, are you pregnant and say only if people said yes, should they appear in this new report, you could do that and, and create a new one. I'm just going to cancel this for now. Okay, so those are the reports and stats. Um, uh, one last thing about the reports, it's very useful to create these reports also just for exporting data. So if you have a big project with many, many fields, you might not want to export all of your data from all of those fields all the time. If you just want to do some quick analyses based on, you know, age distribution or other things, you can create a report just for those. And then anytime you want to export that data, you don't have to select all the fields again, you can just say export that report. And that's only going to include the subset of fields you wanted in that particular report. So that's another useful way to subset a large project for um, uh, exporting the data for some analysis.